The supposed NVIDIA RTX 4090 is a champion of thermal efficiency. It is small in stature, compact in size, and will assuredly fit in just about any PC case that you can throw at it. This card is going to run so cool you could practically use one as an air conditioner. That's right, boys. Turn off the central air units because summer's over and NVIDIA is here to bring the cool. The RTX 4090. Go burr. More sarcasm in today's gaming news. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, so we got some leaked pics of the RTX 4090 graphics card, some new specs regarding the uh, TDP of the card, as well as system requirements for Uncharted Legacy of Thieves collection, which was leaked by posting early over on the Epic Game Store and then were quickly removed. And we've also got requirements for Modern Warfare 2 and its open beta, which is going to be beginning very soon. So uh, let's get fired into it, laddies. I don't know how it's Scottish that at the end, but let's go with it. All right, let's roll on. Let's roll on. But first, today's video is brought to you by SuperCDK.com, where you could save money on games for all of your favorite platforms, as well as software like Windows 10 Pro licenses for just $22, and then you can unlock the prestigious Dark Mode for Windows 10, which I honestly could not live without. It is blinding without the dark mode you guys needed in your life. And now you can also save an additional 25% off at checkout by clicking buy now on any software products over there, just go ahead and add it into your cart and put in my code JP25 at checkout and apply, and that'll bring our price from $22.44 all the way down to $16.83, a savings of over $5. And I'll walk you through how to get your key and install it on Windows 10. Go ahead and click Submit Order and complete your checkout from there. For me, that's going to be with PayPal, and then click on Pay Now. After completing the checkout, it'll bring you to your purchased order page and it will update in a matter of seconds or just go ahead and hit F5. Go ahead and do that one time. It came through literally immediately. I got the payment email that it had gone through and the delivery of the product exactly at the same time. Once you're done with that, go ahead and click on view keys and codes and we'll get our code right here that we can go ahead and copy and paste in on Windows 10 by hitting the start button and type in the word activate. When you see that, activation settings or see if Windows is activated, go ahead and click on that and it'll bring up this right here and click on change your product key or unlock Windows 10 as I already have Windows 10. I obviously don't need to put in a new key, but just paste it in and then go ahead and click next and you are all done and set. For more information on supercdk.com as well as the coupon code, be sure to check out the links down in the description below. First up, we have some of the first leaked photos of actual RTX 4090 graphics cards. As you can see here with this, not one, not two, not three, but quadruple slot behemoth of a graphics card that barely squeezes into one of Lenovo's pre-built mid-tower cases. This thing is a chunky boy. They, you might call it the Joker Productions of graphics cards because it is the biggest boy in the game, and just look at it. You know this thing is going to be dumping heat. Just dumping it, like a hot load on a glass table in Atlantic City. Don't know where I'm going with that. Anyway, here you can see it's kind of blurred out here. They pixelated for some reason, although you can obviously see the 90 at the end there. And this thing is taking up four slots. And you can see that it is using a single 12-volt power connector right here, similar to what we saw on the RTX 30 series of graphics card. This is a Lenovo Legion card, which they typically don't sell in the aftermarket. They use them inside of their pre-built systems. As you can tell, is everything in here is branded with the Legion uh, logo from the motherboard to the fans to the all-in-one cooler and everything. I might have to hit up my cousin who is actually in charge of the eSports sponsorships for Lenovo uh, and see if maybe she can get us one of these rigs early. Um, we've also got a leaked image of the alleged heatsink from the very same graphics card that was pictured above. And just look at all of those copper heat pipes, baby. I mean, if this thing turns out to be a complete dud, at least you can get your money back by reselling the copper. Yeah absolute behemoth of a card. So obviously, with a card like that, you know this thing's going to be dumping some serious power requirements. Uh, we also got a uh, another picture here from a Gigabyte RTX 4090 before we get to the power stuff. Um, this is just a picture of, picture of the packaging with that updated 4090 font like we had seen in some of the more recent leaks. And you can see a 3D render 
down here of the graphics card that this will be coming with. So not a picture of the actual card, but a render of the uh, the card itself. And uh, yeah, there it is, a box. Next up, the uh, the power requirements, which I was going into. So the RTX 4090 card is currently rumored to be running at a 450 watt default TDP and a max TDP of 660 watts, which I'm assuming is, you know, if there's absolutely no cooling restrictions on the card and you're just letting this thing run balls to the wall and you've got the power to do so, 660 watts is what these things could peak at. Uh, I'm assuming on the Founders Edition card. Now, of course, custom cards, and if you unlock those power restrictions and, you know, start overclocking, I'm sure we'll see some of these cards hitting 700 watts even out of the box. And then when you get things like Kingpin cards, I mean, that thing might need a fucking dedicated 1,000 watt power supply. Absolutely monstrous. Uh, even the 4080 here has a max TDP of over 500 watts at 516 and a base of 340 watts. That's for the 16 gigabyte version. For the 12 gigabyte version, a 285 watt base and 366 max. So I have to think there's going to be some pretty significant uh, performance differences here between the 4080 16 gigabyte and 12 gigabyte, not just on the VRAM side of things. Although the 12 gigabyte does appear to be clocked higher and also does have fewer CUDA cores. So yeah, the 16 gigabyte is not going to be, it's, it's almost like a 4080 Ti, honestly. It's, it's, it's almost like a 4080 Ti, although I'm sure we will get a 4080 Ti at some point as there's a huge gap here in the core counts between the 4090 at over 16,000 and the 4080 16 gigabyte at 9,700. So I'm sure at some point we'll see a 4080 Ti that'll come somewhere in the middle, maybe around 15,000 uh, CUDA cores, but we'll have to wait and see on that. Hopefully we get the official reveal of these at the at GTC in uh, just six days time. That's right, next Tuesday, Jensen Huang will be taking the stage at GTC 2022. And the uh, current rumors and hype is that we will be getting our first look, official look, at the Ada cards. Next up, the official PC system requirements for Uncharted Legacy of Thieves collection, which is said to be launching on October 19th, according to the Epic Game Store. Now, to quickly clarify the officiality of these requirements and the release date, this was posted to the Epic Game Store over the course of the weekend, but it was pulled down fairly quickly, so it seems they kind of jumped the gun on when Naughty Dog and Sony want to officially reveal this information, but I'm assuming if they already put it up, they're probably going to announce this stuff pretty soon, as October 19th is not that far away. We're just a month away from Uncharted finally making its way to the PC, and here are the requirements that they listed. Hope you got a lot of space left on that hard drive, buddy. So for the minimum, Windows 10 version 1903 for the CPU i5-4430 or a Ryzen 3 1200, so fairly modest CPU requirements, which is nice to see. 8 gigabytes of system memory, but you will need 126 gigabytes of hard drive space. And for the recommended, they do say an SSD, but for the minimum, an HDD should do you fine, but it might be a little slow to load in. And it also does mention DirectX 12, a GTX 960, and or an R9-290X, so nothing too crazy for the graphics card requirements. And the uh, performance goal for this is 30 FPS at 720p, medium settings. So... Yeah, you could run it on this, but it's not going to get you very far, honestly. And even for the recommended, it's pretty low expectations with this. i7-4770 or a Ryzen 5 1500X, 16 gigabytes of RAM. Again, 126 gigabyte SSD, DX12. For the graphics, a GTX 1060, 6 gigabyte or an RX 570, 4 gigabyte card. But... This is only targeting 1080p, 30 frames per second on high settings, which is very unfortunate. Most people are going to want to play this game at least at 60 frames per second at 1080p. So seeing that there, I'm, I'm guessing a 2060 would probably get you there or a 2070. Uh, but we haven't seen or gotten any details yet on whether or not this game is going to have DLSS or FSR 2.0. I hope it'll have at least one of those technologies for maybe people that are running lower spec systems like a 1060 from, you know, years ago, and they could take advantage of that to get 60 frames at 1080p, high settings and all of that. So we'll have to wait and see, but very, very excited for Uncharted Legacy of Thieves Collection finally coming to PC for everyone. I played it earlier this year on the PS5 and finally got to complete all those games I hadn't played them previously. I've played the older Uncharted games, but I hadn't played the Uncharted 4 and the the another the, the standalone and whatever came after that, uh, which name escapes me now with the two chicks. Uh, but they were, they were both really great. Uncharted 4 was definitely the better of the two games. But yeah, you guys are finally going to get it on PC and I'm, I'm excited for you. Next up, 
Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 is set to have its beta begin this weekend, although it's only going to be for like pre-orders on the PS4, PS5. It's an exclusive like time thing. The PC is going to get it later this month. I'll give you all the details on that in a moment. But we also got the system requirements for that that beta for the PC that's going to be happening later in September. For the minimum, Windows 10, i5-3570 or Ryzen 5 1600X, 8 gigabytes of RAM. For the GPU, a GTX 670 or an RX 470, only 2 gigabytes of VRAM and 25 gigabytes of space. But you can definitely expect that to jump up considerably for the uh, the final release of Modern Warfare 2. I believe the last Modern Warfare game was like 100 gigabytes plus, including with, with Warzone and everything. So yeah, this is just for the beta, which will probably only be one or two maps at the most. Recommended Windows 10, again, i7-4770K or Ryzen 7 1800X, so fairly dated CPUs, which is nice, as most people should be able to hit that. 16 gigabytes of system memory, GTX 1060 or an RX 580, so we're talking GPUs that are like six, seven years old at this point. I think most people will be able to run this fairly well, and I'm assuming this is for like 1080, 60 frames, high settings type of thing which is typically what's targeted, unlike Uncharted, which was a lot lower. VRAM, 6 gigabytes, they're saying, and uh, again, 25 gigabytes of hard drive space. Now, when will you be able to play the beta? Well, it's going to be open beta on all platforms, September 24th through the 26th. So we've got a couple of weeks to go yet until you'll be able to play it on PC as an open beta without actually having to pre-order. They will have an early access beta on the 22nd to the 23rd, but that is for pre-orders. Um, it's only going to be open at that point if you're on PlayStation, so they've still got some exclusive deals from play with PlayStation from years ago that they're having to honor, despite the fact that Microsoft now has acquired Activision Blizzard. So, yeah, it's it's still it's still only going to be an open beta on the PlayStation for that first weekend, but then following that, it'll be open beta all platforms. So if you want to play it on PC and you don't want to pre-order the game, which you shouldn't, You'll be able to play it on the 24th to the 26th. So you'll have to wait a little bit longer than most people, but we will be able to play it eventually. And as I said, this weekend, they are going to be having it on PlayStation uh, from the 16th to the 17th, and then 18th to the 20th will be open. The 16th to the 17th is for pre-orders. Again, don't pre-order. I might give it a try on September 18th on the PlayStation and give it a go, hook up a mouse and keyboard and wreck some noobs on there and uh, just to get a feel for the game, and maybe we could do a video on that if you guys are interested in seeing one. But there you go, everything we've got in the world of tech and PC gaming for today. Hope you guys all have a fantastic day, and I will catch you next time for another video. And also, before I get out of here, quick thank you to everyone for, uh, you know, sending their thoughts and concerns for my future father-in-law, who I talked about in my, my video on Monday, how he fell on Saturday, hit his head and everything. He's doing fine. He's in great spirits. He's back home, enjoyed watching football on Sunday and everything. And uh, yeah, he's doing good. He's absolutely fine. Just, uh, you know, like I said, a couple stitches and he's got some like numbness there in that spot, but I'm sure it'll heal up and go away in uh, no in no time, honestly. He's bounced back already and he's good to go. So, but thank you for everyone for your thoughts and concern. Definitely appreciate that. Appreciate all of you. And I'll catch you next time for another video. Peace.